it's time for us to get into the talking. But before we do that, I'd also like to call on um, our cocktail guy <laughs> for the cocktail of the week. And the cocktail of the week is actually inspired by the guest that is going to be joining us today. And our cocktail of the week is Sap of the... Of the Empress, inspired by our celebrity guest, Empress Gift Tea, and the ingredients are pineapple juice, apple juice, grenadine, grenadine syrup, and good day energy drinks, and cocktail for by Bruce Services. So guys, um, we're going to get into the discussion, and the discussion, like I said earlier, was prioritizing investment in the creative arts industry. So nearly seven months after Shatawale pleaded with the government to spend 10% of the money it spends on sports, Wendy Shea has reignited the conversation. She says the money spent on football by the GFA should be invested in, mu should be invested in music. So does she have a point? Olele, I'm going to start with you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Good evening to our... Uh lovely viewers um we are back again to yes. this conversation and i think we've talked about it over and over again about the importance of our creative industries not just in ghana but in africa as a whole we've seen uh, our neighbors in nigeria um doing so well with um, their industry at least from wh where we sit mm -hmm. and we've seen how much is contributed to to their economy especially when it comes to nollywood and how they have worked closely with the likes of Netflix or partnered with Netflix and now there's um, Niger on Netflix mm -hmm. I believe which is like um, an, an easy way or shall I say a great way to to get more money into the system when she has a point she has a point but um, what are the facts what's the truth the truth is every budget reading there is an amount of cash mm -hmm. or shall I say there is an amount or there is a figure given to our creative industry the question is where is it mm -hmm. that's the question where's where's the money um, in 2019 in the year of return um, the minister at the time told us that Ghana had cashed in um, with the revenue of 1.9 billion dollars interesting 1.9 billion dollars this was coming as a result of the year of return yeah we are in 2022, right? Mm -hmm. So one was saying that the $1.9 billion we've made as a result of the revenue made from um, the diasporans and everything inclusive, you know, that made what it was. You would see that amount reflect in certain pockets of the creative industry. It could mean, you know, um, seeing more centers, more yeah. event centers. It could mean, um, fixing certain things that may have gone wrong it could mean a lot of things it could mean you know um sub subsidizing or you know helping artists you know get their shows done it could mean a lot of things but we still are not seeing the impact of the 1.9 billion dollars right and for me it worries me a lot and that's because i've always maintained that successive governments that have come <coughs> through um they've come through and shall I say, have come in and out, whether past, present, whatever, they haven't really, really, really showed us that they have a heart for the creative industry. That's true. However, they use that as part of their political gains when they are campaigning for votes. And I feel like that is total disrespect to the people who seem to be flying Ghana's flag higher than the current black stars. And I say this advisedly, wow. yes. Because, tell me the last time Blasters made any Ghanaian proud. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, Azonto was an identity. Because black men or black women or even Ghanaians abroad were identified by the Azonto sound. Not just because of Asamoajan. Because Asamoajan had broken the hearts of many. But Azonto, which had <laughs> come from Ghana, had become an identity that everybody wanted to associate with. When you go to London, you go to America, I mean, you could see the prospects of what the export of our was going to bring. But today we don't have it because we don't have the money to sustain the pressure. We don't have the money to sustain the energy. And it goes further than just the government. You know, you're looking at corporate institutions who are also sitting down 
and not wanting to help. Why? Because they haven't really seen their return. Their the returns. Best, exactly. You know, and um, I hate that this conversation is going to be a comparison of industries, Nigeria and I Ghana. Hate I hate it. But you see, we'll come back to that simply. <laughs> I because always hate it. We, we can't go to the US because the US economy is different. But we can look at Kenya, we can look at Nigeria and see what they are doing. And we can put it side by side and see that Charlie, we are, we are left behind. So when she has a point, she 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 has she has a point. I don't think it's far away from what Shatawali once upon a time said. Mm -hmm. And um, as to taking money from the GFA mm -hmm. or taking money from the Black Stars, unfortunately, yeah. the GFA does not regulate the matters of the creative industry. Exactly. So that cannot happen. You know, it's just that uh, the ministry in charge of the creative arts, tourism, and what have you, are supposed to put their foot on the ground to help the alien industry that is what we need to we need to see if not we'll come back have this conversation and nothing will be done yeah but um adam to you but must must parts suffer for music or the arts to try i mean uh, i i i heard this statement and i mean i was i was so surprised that uh, musicians of their caliber will make this such a statement mm -hmm. I mean, when you talk about... Now, let me uh, start the conversation this way. We are looking at sports and entertainment. When you come to the sports, individuals have seen the need to develop talent. So these individuals have formed football clubs. I mean, these individuals do not have any form of tax rebate. When they import chases, they pay. When they import footballs, they pay. Now, the level of investment government has made is to provide maybe football field. And when they even play football at these venues, they pay a certain percentage to government. Now, the government has an interest in this because at the end of the day, there were a certain federation of international football known as FIFA. And FIFA has set competitions for nations. Now, these competitions have price money. So every nation's Every nation's, nation look at the price money mm -hmm. and says that, okay, let us put a team together and go for this price money. Now, in putting the team together, the government cannot manage it. So he put it into the hands of the Ghana Football Association. And Ghana Football Association comes with a certain budget that if you want us to win this price money, give us this amount. Because we need to go on a certain tour, preparation, do this so that we will go, we will be able to get the money. I mean, Ghana has won seven tournaments, and even a tournament like World Cup. As soon as you qualify, you get about $2 million, which is for preparation money and appearance fee. Mm -hmm. Then, when, even when you exit at the group stage, there is a certain amount of money you mm -hmm. get. When you move to another level, there is a certain amount of money. We have received about six million dollars. We've seen, received eleven million dollars. Mm. We've seen, we've received a lot of money, and this is what the black black stars want to bring home again as a return of investment. So when the government is spending on the black stars or any of the national teams, it is not only just investing sake they are investing targeting the price money that is why they go and invest mm. i mean let me come to the creative side a certain group of people like my brother here decide to say okay i've seen a talent known as chris let me put <laughs> some investment in this talent now in putting the investment they go to studio they go and do this after you have built the talent you need venues to play shows mm -hmm. to recoup the investment. Now, government has decided to put up some auditoriums, mm -hmm. and that is a form of investment in the creative world. Mm -hmm. So getting football fields for the <laughs> sports sector, the government gets you venue for your shows mm -hmm. so that you can recoup from the development of talent you have invested in. Now, at the end of the day, there are certain aspects of legal framework, policy decisions, to ensure you get some amount of money, like the Copyright Act, the government put it in place. There is a certain group of people which is led by you, the creative art people, that collect money and distribute for yourself. Government has created the, enab created the enabling environment. What are you doing there? How are you collecting the money? How are you?
distributing to ensure that you don't go and ask for somebody's money. What are you doing with that? Now, you government doesn't just give money. You present a proposal, a musical. The government gives you $2 million. That $2 million, what is even the state of music and now? Mm -hmm. After the two, let us not make it look as if after we 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 are giving the money, things will change. Fortnite, <laughs> that right. two million. What is even the state of music right now? Just elections, they can't organize. <coughs> after the two million, now from inside sources, when this election was to come on in 2019, it didn't come on. 2020, it didn't come on. 2021, it didn't come on. It was to come on January 2022. It didn't come on. And from inside sources, I mean, as, uh, there is an issue of money. Mm -hmm. After all the two million, it didn't change everything. <laughs> I mean, so let us not make it. Uh, uh, in 20, between 2017 and 2018, we received about 40 million grants from the World Bank. Million. Oh, wow. From yes. the World Bank, 48 million. 48, 48. 48 which is million. even more than the budget we took to AFCON. Hmm. Right. It never got to any artist. <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, uh, the, the reason. That's what I'm asking. Where's the money? I, I'm What's coming. It? I'm coming. You see, there is something happening in the creative art industry. When the ministry goes for this money, I mean, the creative art has tourism. And if you look at our uh, GDP, Mostly tourism is mentioned, mm -hmm. and they look at a certain aspect of, of music. Now, what happens is that the tourism is a structured institution. On its own. Now, we have the Ghana Tourism Development Company, and we have that is GTDC, mm -hmm. and we have the Ghana Tourism, tourism Authority. Tourism, GTA. And aside that, the individuals in the trade, they have the TUGA, mm -hmm. Tour Operators of Ghana. Yeah. And all of these people have working document statistics figures which is lacking in the creative art sector so when money comes recently the, when the former nbssi brought money f as COVID relief for people course, in the creative yes. art to i mean send documents a lot of people failed hmm. in raising documents uh, genuine documents to, to be sell. able to get some money because the government will go on account there is a public account committee which will scrutinize every penny spent on any institution. What makes the money not seen so much in the creative art sector is that, in, in the music or the uh, movie area, is that figures are a problem. Getting the figures to talk for you is where we are lagging. Right. And we need to, I mean, do the right things. Now we have set up we have passed the creative arts bill there is we are waiting for an ally a legislative instrument to i mean i mean move the train in that creative art the establishment we need to have a creative art fund let's push for those things you see then you get here and say dear fatter push for that fund to be created for them to put in enough money so that you can access some of these funds. Mm -hmm. Now, that aside, there is the National Film Authority. In the, uh, the <laughs> act which set them up, talks about a film fund. Yeah, what yeah. is in the film fund? Push for them to do the writing. You just don't go on campaigns and come and sit back. I mean, Munye I mean, if you are, you are sitting here today and you are saying that if management asks 10% or 20% of all salary to yours, you will do more. It's like you don't even believe in yourself. True. I true. mean, go for go for your own. Say that you do this, you do that. So give me this. Don't go and ask for some what part of somebody's money. Right, right. I, I, I mean, so, let me cut you short. Let me cut you short. So, so, I, so, so go I can ask for your money and go with your documentation, do your presentation, convince them that give me, you can even ask for 200 billion dollars. Go with your presentation. As long as it's we, I mean, enough. I think sports and entertainment look, need to collaborate in in selling or promoting Ghana rather than we going on this kind of fight. Because there are times that we see some of our top players, Thomas Pate, an example, when uh, he was at Atletico Madrid at a point when they won a, a, a certain title, when the players were coming out, they would play 
a music from your country yeah. and he plays Tom Boy song and people were happy. So this is how sports and entertainment can merge and promote the country. Right, Rather than right. we being seen chasing each other, True. I mean asking for what is due for someone to be given to you. I mean let's come together and, and promote Ghana and our crops. True. So um seven, will the fortunes of the music um, or arts industry show up if it gets the amount of money that is pushed into sports? No. <clears throat> Why? Um, first of all, I really like his submission uh, and like his passion. Um, and two, before I get to your question, I, um, I was selected to be on a committee to basically um, uh, draw the ally for the creative arts industry. Sure. So I kind of like, I'm privy to some certain information. Uh, we have actually done some work and there are certain things that we are working on. We have to present it to the stakeholders first and then before anything happens. But um, in the near future, just in the near future, hopefully the very near future, things will change up a bit, you know, in terms of like funding. Um, but with that said, like he was saying, without funding, even with Creative Arts um, fund that will be set up, you need to have your paperwork ready ready like it's like going to a bank to borrow money like you just can't go with your five fingers or ten fingers without any type of information as to for the past let's say three years what revenues do you make per year per month mm -hmm. um you know what expenditure mm -hmm. revenue all these things you need to have them on lock now the reason why i said that um things might not change much is because we need a few things and the number one thing is human resource we have artists we have talent but they really don't make um, an industry. They are really the products. But if you have people to manage, people to sell, and people to organize how everything works, mm -hmm. imagine a company with no proper structure. structure. Mm -hmm. That's basically what it is. But they probably have like, some, there are some companies that I know have like the really good products, even over, let's say even phones, like some phones that are really way better than the Apples mm -hmm. and the Samsungs, but you don't hear them of them because it might be because of some other problems yes you know so we have the artists we have the talent yes but we don't really have the people to move them to the world stage or move them to a certain direction um, so most of these artists have friends as management mm -hmm. um, I mean the basic music business lingo music business knowledge they don't have royalties contracts and all these things, you might not even understand it. So it doesn't matter if I give you a million dollars and you don't know how to move that money, it's not going to amount to much. Like you need to have people who can strategize. Like I can take this artist from point A mm -hmm. to point B. And remember most of these people who do well, it's not by chance. Like everything has been set. Like yes. this is what we are doing quarter one, mm -hmm. quarter mm -hmm. two, this is what we are doing quarter three. We need this collab, we need like this. Like a whole this. team. Like so a whole team yeah. putting everything together. And if you don't have a team per se, you need to have like somebody who can strategize properly as to how things are supposed to move. And that is what we like mostly in this industry. For the few who've done well, there's some that I'll definitely say, um, it happened out of almost luck, sheer luck, mm -hmm. especially like, and when it does, you can see it because it's like one song. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then, yeah. yeah. And then, and then it's, it's done, like it's, they can't come yeah. out with a second yeah. one because the first one was really pure luck, you know? But like the ones who have, have been able to sustain it, you realize there's some certain amount of structure with the team or the brand that you're able to move year in and year out because it takes a lot to sustain a brand, a music brand, because every year, every two, three years, things change so much. I mean, I don't know how Sakwadi has been able to survive all this time because he's been through the eras of Krunk, Azonto, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's, there's like, it's yeah, changed so much yeah. and he's still here, yeah. you know? So most artists would just abandon whatever they were doing and run straight into this one, abandon mm -hmm. when the next one comes and sometimes they'll get lost. You know, so when you have the money and you don't have the structure or how to move, the money's not going to help you that much. So with the money coming in, if there's money coming in, we will need um, even like management, like if you are an artist manager, maybe some certification or some type of education to go yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah. You know, because let's say an artist team went for this money and there's nobody qualified on that team to exactly. use the money. They'll smoke the so money even away. Do presentations and all that. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nobody on that team to even do what, what to what do with this money. It's, you know, but uh, sports betting might probably all go to that one because mm -hmm. somebody might think, you know, maybe you can double this money, yes. sports betting, everything will go away. But just find people who are competent enough. But even like I said, even before you get that money, 
there is a trail that paperwork that you have to like present so hopefully that helps eliminate people who are going for this money and they don't really deserve it you know some people deserve it because maybe their, their craft or art is great but if you don't have the business side attached to it I don't think you deserve that money. All right. So talking about the people or the team or you resources, know, the human the, resources, the experts and the human resources. Um, do you think that there is a, a lack of interest? Because, I mean, that's what I see. That probably lack, lack of interest on whose side? Um, people to join these teams, or is okay. it the the musicians yeah, that need to go out and look for these people? Yes, I think it's musicians who need to go out and look for these people. Most of the time. They immediate friends uh, who they are, their management. And you know what, like they are friends. Basically to me, a friend can really guide you because he doesn't want to offend you. Sometimes really, some friends are haters really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and they won't even, yeah, they won't even want to tell you the, the, yeah. the right things or they would be glad that you're both going a certain direction mm -hmm. that yeah. will derail you. You know, but if, I mean, you can definitely start with um, your friends, quote unquote, but if you're a good artist, if you're a good talent, you get approached by other more serious management or other more other people. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, no, they want to go with the day one. You know, the people have been there. Mm -hmm. And if, but if that's, you know, the person cannot do certain things, like this, this, this thing, there's when you are hustling to get like free shows to play. Yeah. And then there's stages when you sign contracts and like shows are coming in 20, 30, mm -hmm. 40,000. Mm -hmm. You know that you cannot sustain this person, especially if they're not willing to learn to and grow, grow with you as an artist. You know, you need to like maybe put them back on some other role, yes. get somebody else. Yes. To come in to be yes. head of everything in the move, yeah. Mm -hmm. Things for it, yeah. yeah. So. Right. Okay. So, all um, um, looking at the the arts, how do you think they can actually get funding? Aside the budgetary allocation with the government, I think it's it's good positioning. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you should you should know your worth, and you should know what your worth brings. You know, to to the fore and. Uh, that should, that, should, that should be a great start. I mean, if Sarkozy walks into a meeting right now, I don't think he'll talk too much. Mm. Because over the last 10 years, he's proven, he's shown that his brand has been consistent. His brand has been able to stand the test of time. So if you come on board. I mean, Samini taught us the way, if I can say so. Samini was one of the first artists we put on an MTN scratch card. You know, I don't know if, if I'm mistaken or yeah, uh, yeah, Tick had true. one in the UK. Who? That was in New Tick. Tick, yes. That was in UK. Tick, yes. Tick, tick as well. I mean, those those times. I mean, I think another issue here is some of the artists don't really learn from some of the successful predecessors. You know how they were able to work together with corporate institutions but to not to cut you yeah. short. So the problem there is most of the older ones, the older generation of musicians who did these deals, really. Close the doors? May, yes, close the doors. Hmm. So if you look at it, there's not really a lot of yeah, that collaboration going on. Yeah, it's we don't really right. see that. Because they'll tell you straight out. So closing the door, do how? In what sense? Probably didn't really go according to whatever was Contract signed. Teams. The contract that was mm -hmm. signed, they probably broke a few. They, there's a few breaches of the contract that, you know, things didn't go the way it was supposed to go. And the uh, entities, co corporations are not interested in working with artists anymore. I mean, mm -hmm. I've heard, I have a company that basically twice to bridge um, artists and their companies, be it sometimes even producers, um, music production for the adverts, mm. right, right. or uh, uh, an artist for mm. a, a corporate mm. gig or something, you know. And yeah, most of the time they don't want to deal with um, artists at all in their teams. Um, I've had several problems with, with that currently. Um, and it's because, like I said, they come in with their friends and everything is a joke it. and everything is mm, just mm. it's funny it's funny <laughs> you know. like i said the, most of them don't know the the lingo they don't yeah they, lingo, they, don't, like, they don't understand the yeah, business the of is, music the, the corporates are not trying to give you money for free you yeah, exactly know. you need to bring exactly. back something you're, you're doing something like yeah. i've had one where like they were supposed to shoot a video and 6 a.m or so at jamestown i'd laughed in my head the day before like there's no way an artist will show up at jamestown at 6 a.m in the morning <laughs> but they thought it would, you know, and yeah, it didn't come on. Wow. <laughs> and so your phones were switched off. You see. Which artist is go. this? Oh, come oh, on. Yeah. I mean, see, so... so to, I, thought to, you, to, I, I, I thought you were just going to share a clue. I mean, oh. it, it's, just, it's just to tell you that everybody's guilty in the chain. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as an artist, you need to understand that you are a working business. Yeah. You are a working money-making machine. Mm -hmm. You know, the likes of the, the Whiskits and the Burner Boys, the way they move, you could tell that 
with every step they make, they are making an amount of money. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Ghanaian artists should be able to come to that realization and take it seriously. It's not even just about corporate meetings. Even for interviews, you give an artist time to show up. True. The artist may not show up early and their phones will be off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I give you a typical example, and I'm allowed to say because it happened here. Yeah. There was an artist who was supposed to come on countdown, right? We give him a time. He was supposed to show up at 3.30. As at 3.30, the producer calls him and his phone was unreachable. So at 4.15, he WhatsApps the producer and tells the producer that, oh, Charlie, last night I went out to a good booze. Oh, wow. And I had a hangover. I woke up vomiting all over the place. Hey, so Charlie, I bet. <laughs> oh, wow. You, you get what I'm saying? So, I mean, and you, 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 you think you'll get another chance? No, yeah, no. You, you, don't you have see, that. you need to not carry a good boost. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, you have an interview tomorrow, right? You prepare for what the interview. The you put, for you? Ex exactly, because he had just dropped a new single he wanted to promote. But he went to booze. We're like, not okay. saying don't have fun. <laughs> but you should be able to prioritize According the things mm -hmm. that will matter to you and bring the money to boost more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get me? But you shut some of these doors and then you come back and you wonder why you're not getting opportunities. Mm -hmm. And you see, the industry circle is small and everybody knows what everybody's it's up really to. It's really small. Yeah. You get to, everybody knows, okay, I can put my money in this artist and I can get this one because everybody's talking. And some of us, um, when I say some of us, I mean within the creative industry, we talk to each other. Mm -hmm. You get me? It may not come out of um hate spiting or spiting yeah. right but if you came to me you had a hundred million dollars and you wanted to put an artist that i know that's not have the great a great work ethic i'll tell you straight away that don't put your money in this one because at the end of the day you're going to lose it but if there's an artist i don't even know that has great work ethic and i know you make your money back in the next two years i'm telling you to put your money in the artist because at the end of the day when you help the artist grow it will inspire other artists to do their writing right do you right. get what i'm saying mm -hmm. so artists themselves need to get it to write from the scratch so that when they present themselves to opportunities opportunities will not shut them at the right, back right right yeah. adam how do you think we can um, i mean artists or the creative art industry can actually get some funding i mean apart I think, from the government uh, obviously uh, come again apart from the government i yeah. mean uh, I, I was going to bring in this that uh, the government has that plan in place already We're talking about the creative art fund in the new uh, 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 agency which is coming up so that has been catered for in a way but that fund itself you cannot just assess it like that you need to present a certain document let them know that there can be some good return on investment so so you are given so you carry that spirit to to the corporate world i mean the teams need to be creative because artists as a product everything around them it's money and they can make a lot of money sure. from things they do they can even i mean be strategic to get clothing company to sponsor them designers to clothe them throughout and get so many things for free which otherwise they would have used money, money for. for so i mean the teams need to be creative and uh, value the products they have and sit down and put in place certain mechanisms which can bring in more revenues in the things they are, they are doing. And also they need to open their eyes to, I mean, the new, I mean, digital dynamics because there are a lot of, someone will say, there are a lot of money on the internet. Right, I mean, right. so they need to tap in strategically. Sure. This is the time that where you fall short as an artist, you get someone to fill in that gap. Maybe you think you need the services of IT, some IT guys, I mean, to help you know how you can get a lot of revenue from uh, digital internet, space, yeah. you get them on board as part of your team so that you'll be able to do that. I mean, okay. the creative arts industry is a very good industry. If you look at all the documents, we have Ghana Poverty Reduction Strategy, GPRS, I mean GPRS 1, GPRS 2, all of these documents talk about how the creative arts can create a lot of job opportunity become an avenue for skills development and also help in world creation. So we need to, I mean, put in the right mechanisms, the right attitude to be able to tap in that okay. and we will be fine. Right. Seven, any last words to probably any artists watching you right now or maybe <laughs> any upcoming artists? Um, I think the easiest way for them to get money, which is the upcoming ones, is possibly just try and do your own shows. Mm -hmm try maybe a target of maybe once a month or yeah. once every two weeks mm -hmm. 
even if let's say even if you're getting a hundred a thousand mm -hmm. CDs revenue per show over a course of a year once every two weeks that will be some money for you right that'll be some money instead of let's like, staying home and not doing anything mm -hmm. um, I know certain artists once, once they get to a certain point like high school shows and these shows they don't want to go but I understand like three to five thousand CDs okay. at least you get it mm -hmm. why not go Right. I think they don't, there's no determination to chase that money. That is one of the problems. True. Olele, last words, final uh, one. I, I think we focused a lot on the artists, but I think the conversation cuts across to the really, dancers, yeah. to the actors, or the film industry. There are a number of you know uh, industries within the creative industry mm -hmm. that we can all look at in putting our Even investments. Even hairdressers are part of creative industry, by the way. Hairdressers, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, mm -hmm. it's not just, Crafts. you know, narrowed down to just artists. I think everybody within the creative arts chain should really position themselves strategically and get the right investments. And then, of course, bring money back into the country. But the monies that we've made for the country so far, we need to see. <laughs> we need to see. Yes. 1.9 billion dollars. We need to see the money work for I agree our with creatives. You that we need to see, and maybe we need to talk about that sure. next Thank time. You Thank you so much, guys, for this insightful conversation. And I hope you enjoyed it, especially you that is watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and you will, you know, you know, pick some few things in it and probably put into your craft as a creative. Now it's time for us to get to the red couch to talk to our celebrity guest of the day. So. It's time for us to take a quick break. When we come out, we'll be doing that. Don't go nowhere. <laughs>